The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Welcome to Service of the Word for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Particular thanks to Richard Brain and the Christ Church Virtual Choir and Soloists for recording all of the music this week, and to Jackie Anderson and the Reverend Hazel Mile for their recordings. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. from the epistle of Paul to the Romans. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead 
will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Here ends the first reading. Thou visitest the earth and blessest it. Thou makest it very plenteous. Thou the river of God is full of water. Thou preparest the corn for small and providest for the earth. Thou waterest her furrows, thou sendest rain into the little valleys thereof. Thou makest it soft with the drops of rain, and blessest the increase of it. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. And thy crowns drop fatness. They shall drop upon the dwellings of the wilderness. And the little hills shall rejoice on every side. The fold shall be full of sheep. The valley's also shall stand so thick with corn that they shall laugh and sing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what is sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Here ends the second reading. One of the benefits of an extended lockdown is that the nation's gardens, balconies and window boxes have never looked better. We appear to have rediscovered or confirmed our national love of gardening. The pent up demand when garden centres reopened was astonishing. I've never seen queues like it. I'm afraid life in the vicarage was similar. I, like many others, rummaged about to find slightly odd and old packets of seeds whose moment had come and planted them, mainly because I couldn't find any else to buy. So the interesting variety of yellow tomatoes are going well, as are some very strange herbs. But the disaster was the old packet of broad beans I found, my absolute favourite vegetable, which actually germinated really well. I had assumed nothing would happen, so thought that I could clear up some strawberries to make some way for them and plant those that came up. Obviously, I ended up with every seed producing a really strong plant, 
but the early great weather meant that the strawberries were also doing really well and I wasn't going to pull up any of those. However, all was not lost. I had my potato bags from last year unused as there were no seed potatoes to be found. So I planted broad beans in potato bags. Now, if you take any message from this homily, it is to never plant multiple broad bean plants in potato bags. They initially grew very well, but the total lack of social distancing between the plants meant that it was Christmas and Easter rolled into one for the black fly. In the space of a few days, they were covered and eaten and done for. This sorry tale of horticultural failure is not one of the things that goes wrong to the seeds scattered in the very familiar parable in today's gospel. Something like, some seeds fell in potato bags where they were too close together. They sprang up quickly, but were choked by black fly. Sounds rather mundane. As I suspect, the original parable would have sounded to the first listeners, who would have been very well aware of how to survive by nurturing precious seeds. To be told that birds eat seeds that land on the path, plants with shallow roots won't survive hot sun, and that plants get choked by weeds, was a description of what was happening all around them all the time. There was no wow message, or even a punchline to the story. The explanation was only given to the disciples later on, who presumably were also wondering what the point of these obvious statements were. We all know about the word being stretched away or withering or being choked or bearing fruit. But I often think that even that is too simplistic. Are people being penalised forever for not understanding something the first time they hear it? Sometimes lives can be so complicated and absorbing that it's not the right time for a change to happen. I cannot think that the parable is saying that we only have one chance. The word is scattered, and depending what sort of soil you are, that's it. The kingdom of God is not a once-only offer. It is everywhere, here and now. If nothing else, as well as giving more time for finally getting around to hobbies and projects that have been there for years, Lockdown has given us a chance to think and reflect about what is important and, crucially, what is not important. As we start our return to normal life, whatever that ends up to be, it's given us a golden opportunity, almost a once-in-a-lifetime chance, to take a real look at how the Kingdom of God can find a true connection and become a more part of our everyday life going forward. God is with us on our everyday and basic tasks. The parable of the sower is about giving us, Jesus' disciples, a time to seek out what God is saying in the very ordinariness of life. Look at simple things that you take for granted, like the way that those seeds fell and grew, which seem obvious and have no great theological depth, and see what God is saying to you in your life. The parable can be interpreted as there being four types of soil, and each person is a particular type but I think that each of us can be all the soil types at different times in our lives. We can be misunderstanding, we can be too busy or too tired to hear what God is saying. So we should try to be the good soil where the word takes root and we can take our part in bringing about the kingdom. We can all bear fruit, abundant fruit. So now is the time to watch and listen, to understand what we can do and change, to come out into the new world and make it better for all in our community. But remember, like seeds, there are no instant changes. It takes time for the words to take root and mature, so work at it. Nourish the word of God and look forward to the harvest.
Let us pray. Let us pray that the word of God will be fertile in the church and in the world. Give to the church the grace to receive the word of faith and obedience and bring forth good fruit for the growth of the kingdom. As we return with thanks to public worship, take away all that hinders witness so that all people can share in the ministry to work for the harvest that is to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come in mercy to all who are hungry for the word, but who are being held back by the pressures of everyday life. Bring peace across the world and an increased desire to work together to minimise the effects of the pandemic. Be with those who have dedicated their lives to sharing the word of your love to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we share our lives with others who are close to us, Help us to love as those who have heard and received the word, that we may be bearers of good news and doers of good works in our community. May it be a field of good soil blessed by the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on those who are struggling at the moment, who are caught up in the pressures and trials of life. We ask your blessing on those who work for the care and healing of others. Support all those who are sick, those who care for them, and those who watch and wait with them. Surround them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the departed who have started their new life in you, remembering those who have died recently and all those who have died in the pandemic. In your mercy, grant them your promised gift of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in the name of Christ, who brings us the good seed of the kingdom.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen.